uh, penciled in for June the 8th by the Prime Minister in that shock announcement yesterday. Uh, well, joining me now is co-leader of the Green Party, Caroline Lucas. Good morning to morning. you. Uh, how much did that announcement take you by surprise yesterday? Well, we were surprised, not least because this is a Prime Minister who's prided herself on being no-nonsense, saying what she's going to do and sticking to it, and then, of course, the most dramatic U-turn that could be imagined. Mm. Having said that, we're up for it. We're glad she's called it because we think it's right that people have an opportunity to have a say not only on the incredibly extreme form of Brexit that she's pursuing, for which we believe she has no mandate, there was nothing about the single market on the ballot paper on the 23rd of June, but also an opportunity to have their vote on the kind of hugely damaging social policies, the crumbling NHS, the funding coming out of our schools, the fact that in the fifth, sixth richest country in the world, we also have five million children uh, facing real poverty. So this is a real opportunity to have a say both on direction of Brexit, but also on social and environmental policies too. Because the Liberal Democrats have come out and they're focusing very much on Brexit. They've carved out a niche for themselves against the Conservative. Uh, Conservatives, Labour very much concentrating on domestic matters. You're meeting somewhere in the middle then? We're absolutely the party to vote for if you want to combine both opposition to an extreme Brexit and opposition to the kind of incredibly damaging social policies and frankly the Lib Dems aren't in a good position to do that having been in coalition last time around. But is that enough? You've written a letter today to Jeremy Corbyn and to Tim Farron um, talking about well, asking them to meet with you to discuss some form of progressive alliance to see if together you are stronger, I've heard that somewhere before, um, to defeat the Conservatives because not one party seems to be able to do it on their own. Well, let's get real. I think a cursory glance at the polls suggests that Labour and Lib Dems, even if they were combining their poll together, are going to be struggling unless there's a concerted effort in a number of seats, not every seat by any means, a handful of key seats where we might be able to have some kinds of arrangements which could mean that we would not split uh, the vote, the anti-Tory vote, and so that we could have a better chance of ensuring that we have a more representative government next time round. And this is second best to electoral reform. Let's not forget that this is a government that was elected on less than 24% of the eligible vote, fewer than a quarter of people eligible to vote voted for this government so we have a, a broken electoral system but before we get around the chance to, to actually mend that there's something we can do at this election in a handful of seats to have those conversations to say how can we avoid the worst of an incredibly damaging Tory government. Have you had a response from Jeremy Corbyn or Tim Farron yet? I spoke to John McDonald the Shadow Chancellor for Labour and to Tim Farron earlier and neither of them seem particularly keen on the idea they're not willing to throw in the towel just yet and form this progressive alliance. I think there's a real distinction between <clears throat> any suggestion that there will be a national progressive alliance. We're not suggesting that and quite understand why they wouldn't want that either. Mm. But I do think the door uh, is open to having talks at a local level to see if there might be some kinds of arrangements which could spread right through from simply tabling, uh, fielding paper candidates right through to potentially having an open primary, uh, only having one anti-Tory candidate standing. There's a range of possibilities, as I say, a handful of seats, but this could make a real difference. The reason for doing this is that if we don't, then we're basically handing power to a Tory government that is going to be the most ideologically driven when it comes to cutting public services, this extreme Brexit, this kind of image that she has for Britain, which I don't think is the thing that most people in this country want. OK, Caroline Lucas, thank you. Co-leader of the Green Party, thank you for joining us here on Sunrise this morning. Um, we're going to uh, leave matters here for the moment. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have more in the build-up to that vote in